Okay, this is part two. I have already started the seed experiments. I will post another video for you a couple days along in the germination of the seeds. We're actually going to be creating, it sounds like Jack and the Beanstalk, right? We're actually going to be talking about magic seeds, not literally magic, but we're going to be talking about uh, spatial temporal rarefaction, spatial temporal compression due to the magnetodielectric phase shift that affects biological growth not only in dry seeds but plants and animals but occurs at a ratio of one to five shape just like an egg up here we'd have one down here we'd have an area of five south pole here north pole here obviously inverse necessitated pressure mediation one to five but ultimately we have one over five and we have over here five centrifugal magnetic divergence which is the loss the necessitated reciprocation the projective geometry of what defines magnetism and the magnet of course taking a look at this magnet this magnet before it became a magnet and it was magnetized you know it still had every bit of its magnetic capacity within it so what changed there was no uh, quantification change rather a qualification change and that qualification is magnetodielectric coherency the easiest way for you to understand a magnet would be like a field laser we both know uh, hopefully you know the difference between coherent and incoherent light coherent light being a laser why is a five watt light bulb no good to read by by a five watt laser will burn a hole in your ass okay Nobody takes any notice of this object before it has been magnetized by magnetizing coils, increasing uh, dielectric capacitance in the neodymium iron boron or the ferrite or the sumerium cobalt magnet. But we have to differentiate out descriptions from explanations. What is occurring is magnetodielectric coherency. And we talk about aligned domains, but that's still only a description. That's not an explanation of what defines magnetism. Magnet itself in denotation is nothing other than the coherency of the magnetodielectric lattice of the neodymium iron boron ceramic that sits here before you it's an N50 gauss by the way the higher the gauss the more shallow the field and that is like necessitated pressure mediation because on either magnet here we actually have a centrifugal divergence and a centripetal convergence it's like creating an extremely powerful outspout shower but also increasing the vacuum pressure at the centripetal point of return what it does is it actually shrinks the field that's why higher gauss magnets you can actually whip out a gauss meter and you actually notice that on really really powerful magnets it's like well this magnet's really powerful but the field is really shallow in other words you don't actually feel the quote unquote magnetic pull and that we BS denotate and connotation denotation is attraction and repulsion there is no such thing as magnetic attraction and repulsion is dielectric voidance and counter avoidance due to phase shift of the necessitated pressure mediation of what is magnetism. Michael Faraday so very long ago referred to magnetism as the dielectric field. But what is dielectricity? I can show you what the dielectricity is of this magnet. That is the inertial plane of this magnet. You see it right there, the white strip along the middle, right in the middle of the magnet. It is no different than this toroid. No different. Here we have inertia and acceleration. We have still. Now quantum mechanics and general relativity, the idiots have actually replaced the word ether, which they hate, with another word, which is exactly the same thing. They replaced it with quantum fluid. And they will, of course, admit that, well, we don't know what 70% of the universe is, so we're just going to call it dark matter. They've inserted the word matter, i.e. atomistic thought. It's not matter. It is inertia. It is the ether. The one most scary word, if you ever want to piss off, I don't care how smart they think they are, how smart you think they are, if you ever want to piss off someone that's a supposed expert of general relativity or quantum mechanics, ask them to find one word and their assholes will pucker so tight it will create diamonds. Define this one word. They cannot do it because they know it has nothing to do with particles. They know a field denotation and connotation is particle free. Everything in the universe is field based. The one thing that you will never find an explanation or a denotation of anywhere in this world 
except for me, I'm actually writing the book on it, <laughs> is this word, field. Fields have nothing to do with particles, they're particle free. The ancient Greek word, kora. Okay, kora. What is the kora? What is the denotation of a kora? Field. Okay? Fields have nothing to do with particles. But everything in general relativity is the rationalization that there is something. Space is neither a force nor a field. It can act on nothing. Tesla actually referred to, actually Tesla called Einstein a long-haired, fuzzy-haired crank, which he was, and everything that actually Einstein ever wrote was stolen from one of two people, Roger Boscovich and uh, uh, Poincaré. And uh, Tesla said uh, countless times that the notion that space, which has no properties, can act on anything or do anything, was absurd, was ridiculous. He said this ideology was doomed to failure, and of course he is correct. So that's the one word that is never defined. Anyway, we're looking at the dielectric inertial plane of the magnet. Let's zoom in. And you can see it here. You see that white line right along the middle? That's the dielectric inertial plane. That is the point of zero magnetic reciprocation. It is the null point. As I told you before, Mother Nature doesn't draw a line like this. This is how we draw a line. Okay? Mother Nature doesn't do that. Here is how Mother Nature draws a line. This is Mother Nature's line. Okay? Right here we have CS, counter space, and over here we have space and time. ST. We have magnetic reciprocation. We have precession. It's also called the Lamour frequency. How a magnet works and what magnetism is. A reciprocating precessional hyperboloid discovery, uh, 2014, uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism. This is Mother Nature's counter space right here. Just pretend that is indivisibly finite, invisible. And here we have force in motion, i.e., magnetism. That is, the height, that is the hypertrochoid. If you actually look down on it, you can see the hypertrochoid. Or some of you would actually call it a torus or toroid. Okay, and then imagine this center spot is actually infinitely small instead of the large gap that it is right here. Okay, inertia and acceleration, force and motion. Reciprocating, processing. And it is a hyperboloid. Describing a hyperboloid to you would actually take a while. Uh, is actually defining space and force and motion. You can actually see what I just showed you here. Remember? You see the toroidal here? The toroid, i.e. the spirograph pattern? The hypertrochoid? This is an actual magnet underneath the ferrule cell. You see the same pattern right there? Oh my god, yes. That is how nature shoots out and drains for lack of a better analogy for you to quickly understand, shoots out and drains the loss of ether, i.e. inertia. It is a force in motion divergence. Discovery, copyright, uh, 10, 2013, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, 2nd edition. Okay, this is the real Mother Nature. Inertia and acceleration, force and motion, space and counter space, charge and discharge, centrifugal and centripetal, divergence and convergence. Here is the cross-eyed, insane crack whore of general relativity. Virtual particles, warp space insanity, negative momentum particles, unqualified quantum multiverse, time-traveling force particles. Mother Nature uses calculus and a calculator. Big bangs and black holes. Space, which is neither a force nor a field, acts on things and does things. Insanity! Insanity. Tesla said this was an insanity. Oliver Heaviside said this was an insanity. C.P. Steinmetz said this was an insanity. T.J.C., a renowned physicist and field theorist, they all said the notion that everything of general relativity and quantum mechanics was insanity, and they are correct. You need to look up some of the works of Eric P. Dollard, by the way. This is how magnetism actually looks. It's acted upon by uh, light. This is magnetism actually affecting light underneath the ferrocell. Okay? A magnet does not have poles. A magnet has the inverse of this. Inertia, i.e. the ether. What is the inverse of inertia? It is this, force and motion. 
99, well, actually that's not it, I was going to say 99.9, 100% of the visible universe, the uh, inner atomic uh, diameter, inner atomic radius of every atom in the universe is held up by magnetodielectricity. In other words, that which gives uh, volume to every atom in the universe is defined by one thing, magnetism, one thing only. Okay, that which gives noumena definition as phenomena, literally as far as existence, existence of course meaning existence, to exist outside of oneself, i.e. force in motion, i.e. to identify with phenomena rather than noumena. Anyway, getting back to the seeds. I've started the seed experiments. We're going to be doing alfalfa seeds. I have performed this experiment many times. Ask me about these particular works because these are actually suppressed works by our own government. No lie there, no conspiracy BS. This is the one time where it's actually true. This work is actually genuinely suppressed. There are very, very few copies of it exist. What you need to understand that the ancient Greeks and Platonists understood when it came to geometry, okay? Actually, I got some magnets underneath there. Okay, geometry. What precedes geometry? What gives definition to geometry? Force and motion, inertia and acceleration. What precedes geometry? What is geometry denotatively? Geometry is this. This is something they never teach you about in school. Geometry. Oh, it doesn't matter if it's a square, a cube, a rhombus, this shape, any shape. All geometry is this. If you don't understand this, you are an idiot, but you're an idiot just like every other person is an idiot because you weren't taught this stuff in school. Effect. What is the cause? What is the precedent cause of that? It's not literally a point. It's something that actually precedes a point. Projective geometry. Okay, how am I going to draw a square? Hmm. Talking about geometry. Now, we are getting into, oh my god, here we go, we got a cube. Effect. Right here we have cause, projective geometry, non-Euclidean geometry. What you need to understand, non-Euclidean geometry would be what? This would be inertia. And over here, effect, this would equal force. It would equal magnetism. Magnetism. The loss of inertia is the reciprocation of the loss of that inertia as extrapolated out in the reciprocating precessional hyperboloid which defines absolutely every atom in the universe. Okay? You can look up any book. Even the assholes of quantum mechanics and general relativity will admit to you that an atom is 99.9999999% empty space. Well, that's bullshit. Actually, what props up and gives definition and volume to every atom, that 99.9999999% is this big word right here. M. Magnetism. What is a magnet? What is magnetism? Denotation versus connotation. We're not talking about descriptions, we're talking about explanations. All geometry is effect. Square, cube, sphere, blah, 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 doesn't matter. This is an effect. What precedes the effect? That's what we want to know about. That's what the ancient Platonists and the Pythagoreans were interested in. This. This is the source right here. It's even smaller than this. It's actually so small it doesn't exist. It's inertia. Here is non-Euclidean geometry. Here is Euclidean geometry. Force and motion. Get it? Thanks. Thanks.